Not because we finished the other one, but only because. <laughs> only because we're we're in um, a path here with uh, with Moshe Rabbeinu, as we saw at the end of Nativ Anava, as we learned it, and. Um, <sighs> And so, um, so we're going to continue with that into uh, Yerat Shamayim, Yerat Hashem, and um, we're not. We're, 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 we'll learn the pasuk that the Maharal is uh, basing the Nativa on, and, and um, a little bit around that, and, and then and then turn to the uh, first Mamar Chazal that he learns. Uh, which uh, continues the theme of Moshe Rabbeinu. So um, he's chosen to put this here right after um, right after his teachings about uh, Anava. Tchilat chokma yirat Hashem v'daat kedoshim bina. Tchilat chokma yirat Hashem, indicating again that uh, yirat Hashem is what enables us to access wisdom. Da'at Ktoshim Bina and um, it's a uh, it's a uh, awareness 
of the um, of the kedoshim, that is bina. Um, okay, we'll just leave that. The perak in umdim in in the um, in the perak uh, uh, of of brachot that teaches about uh, the pathways of prayer of Enondim, Elami Kovid Rosh, the person that comes to prayer of Mikovid Rosh. So there we're told the following, Mara Bichanina, Hakol Bidei Shamayim Chutz Mi Yirat Shamayim. Hakol Bidei Shamayim Chutz Mi Yirat Shamayim. Everything is in the hands of Shamayim except for Yirat Shamayim. Shenemar, Ve'ata Yisrael, Ma, it really should say, Ma Hashem Elokecha Shoel Me'imach, Ki Im Li'ira Oto. God turns to the Jewish people in, in Varim, and uh, Moshe Rabbeinu really turns to the Jewish people and says to them uh, that, uh, what is God asking after all? Ma Hashem Elokecha Shoel Me'imach, Ki Im Li'ira Oti. I mean, after all, Big deal. I mean, big deal. What's the, what's the, what's 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 the heavy what's the heavy duty? No big deal. But what's more uh, significant here in the context of this medrash is that uh, the uh, one thing that our college Pope was asking us to do is liyirauto, uh, meaning that that everything else he doesn't have to ask us to do. We just do it. Um, and uh, this is the one thing you got to go. Okay, say uh-huh. This is the one thing which uh, which uh, I can't I can't make you do. It's the one thing that I have to ask you to do. So um, Chazal pick up on on the, the two aspects of this. Uh, first, the aspect of it uh, seeming as if it's simple. And then the second aspect of uh, seeing as if it's out of Hakadosh Baruch Hu's control, and they say the following: Atu yira milta zutratahi. I mean, is yira is yira a small thing? nazav yira I mean, the thing that Hakadosh Baruch Hu treasures most, exactly treasures most, and, and guards as his precious. Um, Precious possession is Yirat Shamayim. So clearly, that must mean that this is this is the creation's greatest accomplishment. If it's the thing that Hakadosh Baruch Hu treasures most, and if it's easy, that would that wouldn't make sense. I mean, uh, uh, or and maybe the, you know, uh, ease and not ease is the wrong way to put it. It's clearly very significant. Very significant, and Ma Hashem Elokecha Shuel Me'imach makes it sound like it's not that significant. I mean, I'm not asking for you something big. That can be interpreted in terms of effort involved, and that can be interpreted in terms of value of what's accomplished, right? I mean, the fact that Chazal emphasized that that's what it is in Hakadosh Baruch Hu's Otsar sounds like the emphasis is really on the question of significance, right? So, so the Gemara says, uh, well, I mean, yeah, it is actually, what, not significant or easy to accomplish, a small matter, right, which would fudge the issue. <laughs> it's something small. This is the Gemara's term, you're right. It's something small. Milta zutrati. Milta zutrati. It's something small. Where? The Gabi Moshe. I mean, it's Moshe Rabbeinu who's speaking to the Jewish people, so Moshe Rabbeinu is speaking from his own perspective, right? And his perspective has it that Yirat Shamayim is something which is uh, Zutrati, something small. Mashal Adam, Shemivakshim Imenu Kli Gadol. You ask someone for something uh, big, and he's got it. Okay? That's... Uh, uh, that's a domer love kikli katan for him. That's something small. By the way, katan ve'elo. But I mean, if you ask for some something small, uh, if, 
from someone that doesn't have it, domei alav kikli gadol, and then it feels very, very big. So you and your experience might have it that this is a kli gadol because you don't have it, but really it's a what? Is it a kli katan? Is it a kli gadol? Well, it's all relative. It depends completely upon the reality that you live. That's what it would seem. Sure. Yeah. Uh, it's all relative. Maybe not. Besides, I think it's just it's a difference between um, the challenge requiring and the reality of having. Meaning that when, when it's going from, from nothing to something, it's not the thing itself, zero, which is so large. It's the fact that you don't have it is a, is a large challenge. Right. So, so the, the year itself doesn't change. That's why Moshe Rabbeinu sees it as small, not because... Um, Something's a, different now. But not, not also, I would say, not because it's a minor thing to him necessarily, but because he already has it, so therefore... Um, that's why I see in aim, if you ask for katana, aim low, don't allow it to be gadol, because it's just an absolute lack. Right. Though we need to notice that in the mashal, uh, it's not clear how much to make of this, but um, when it's asked of the person who has it, it is a kli gadol. I mean, there are there are certain absolute terms being used in the uh, in the in the mashal. There, it does sound like uh, it's a kli gadol being asked of Moshe, but he has it, and it's a kli katan being asked of us who don't have it. For us, then it. It feels like a kli gadol. So there are there are terms here that have to do with dimensions, uh, which seem to change. But you're right. The, the point of the metrish is that it depends on who you're asking it of. So when Moshe Rabbeinu says Ma Hashem Elokech Hashuel Me'imach, he's speaking from his perspective, which is also a bit strange. I mean, after after all, he is he is talking to us. I mean. <laughs> You would expect that that um, that he would relate to the way in which we experience it, not in the way in which he experiences. Meaning, meaning, if I were to address it from your perspective, you would always think that under all circumstances, no matter what level he reaches, he thinks. In other words, what you're pointing out is that is that um, well, let's 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 flesh this out. What seems is that it's important that, that there be some indication of the subjectivity of this in the way it's given over. Meaning, it's to... meaning that Moshe Rabbeinu needs to, needs to give indication in the very way in which he delivers the teaching about Yirat Shamayim, that this is purely a matter of subjectivity. And therefore, it's crucial that Moshe Rabbeinu not speak of it as an objective phenomenon. He must speak of it as a subjective phenomenon because that is the, that's the whole point of the medrash, which is, and the teaching, which is that Yirat Shamayim is purely a factor of subjectivity. It's not a phenomenon of objectivity. Were it an ontologically pre-existent uh, phenomenon of, of that's an entity that is then that would be something which would be so to speak mechanically controllable by God like everything else but this one is purely a matter of your inner world and subjectivity it's a product of your experience uh, well that you're already going too far but right now yeah. it's a a product of your experience, in the sense, in, in the sense that it has no objective existence. Okay, fine. Let's 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 leave it at that. Right now, a product of your experience makes it sound like you know it depends on how you were brought up and you know. No, what I don't mean of your past experience. I mean the the, the, of the nature of experience. Yes. A product of the nature of experience. Right. Perfect. Yeah. Exactly. In other words, this is something which is all about experience, but not experience in the sense of uh, of of past history and and the things you've gone through. But experience in the in the most primary sense of what experience is, experience, where there's a perception that is that is being uh, experienced. <laughs> we don't have enough words for this, right? but there's a there's a there's a perspective which is being apprehended. Fine, there's a per perception, there's a percept, right? Meaning that there is some phenomenon which is being perceived, and it's being perceived 
XYs, meaning it's being perceived from the outside. And, and so there's... Self-deception is separate. Okay, exactly. In other words, it requires, in order for it to occur, that there be some sense of my own uh, presence as the, the, the one who is apprehending that which is being seen, and on, on some level being responsive to it by virtue of that standing in relationship with. That is, is, is though it's pretty long-winded, but that's probably we'll see, right? We'll we'll try and we'll try and shorten it down. I mean, after all, it's a Milton Sutrati. <laughs> but but uh, <laughs> okay. <laughs> wait, wait, just one second. Wait, wait, we'll get to this. But but um, but but what's what's probably the best definition for us right now of what Yiratshamayim is <clears throat> is experience experience of something which requires of you an inner subjectivity which is responsive to that which is being perceived. And that X factor, right, is, <laughs> it's the X factor. Right? That X factor is the, is the element which, um, which, which is actually uh, essential and de de definitive for the nature of what of what Yira is. Yira is purely an inner response, which is a uh, a standing in relation to, in a way in which I am uh, in full perception, apprehension, appreciation of that which I stand before, and a awe at the um, the countenance of it the presence of it, the intensity of it. But without the inner experience, without a, a, a consciousness which is able to, to process and, um, and, and form this, there, there can be no, no such thing as Yira. What, what, would, what would the meaning of Yira be without any of that? Okay, Don, Daniel, you wanted to... I was just wondering if there was uh, actually some substance in the noting of it as a multi-zutra, if there's some kind of like tamtsit, like on the one hand, it's not, it's no small thing. On the other hand, it's not something so simply... Beautiful. Yeah, I think, I think you're, you're noticing it. You're not enunciating it yet. And, I, and if I might take a try at that, I think that's, the, that's, that's very present here, that it's a milta zutrati, meaning that it is actually, the, it's the smallest thing that, that creation has. It's this very smallest thing. Because the very smallest thing in creation is your awareness. That's the very smallest thing. It's so minute, we can't pick it up on our MRIs. We can't get, we can't get a reading on that. It's so, subtle. it's so subtle, exactly. The smallness is in its non-dimensionality. It is of another substance, if, if, if substance being the wrong the wrong term for it. Consciousness and awareness responds to as an inner reality, which is indefinable by external um, by external quantification, what they call qualia, right? The quality of something, which is which is what we're describing here, that is experienced by you in the phenomena which your um, which your media of percept are are receiving uh, receiving uh, a what's the word you know receiving input input from input from stimulation from right uh, that is that is processed by the myriad processes that then that then occur in 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 your brain that are trackable are nevertheless those are, that's the big stuff. That's the big stuff. Meaning that is the stuff which is what? The mechanics, the, the mechanics of it. The mechanics of it which is measurable, definable, and um, predictable. to a certain extent predictable, but, um, but, but takes up space. It has a dimensionality to it. That's what makes it the subject of science. It has a dimensionality to it. That's what makes it possible 
to be predictable because it has a a um, a, a, a physicality to it that that is governed by laws that we can uh, describe exactly. We can describe all of those things are descriptions of the phenomena that um, that are that that are so enticing to be the to be the object of our observation that it's actually quite annoying when uh, someone who's involved in the work of those observations is reminded that none of that can describe the nature of an inner experience of something that you know you can measure you know can measure how 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 you know broad the wavelength of red is but you can't describe to me with that you can you can describe to me what red is except the experience you can of ex experience but you cannot con exactly you cannot in all of that you cannot convey what the inner experience of red is like this is why our Aristotle puts poetics ahead of history as a, as a means of articulating truth Beautiful, beautiful, because because it's only poetics in terms of language, and in terms of uh, discovering pattern and order that that convey on some level the inner experience of uh, of the of the per of the perception of the person who is making the perception in that experience which we call experience, right? So so in a sense that that really is a it really is a milta zutrata, it really is a milta zutrata. But it's a milta zutrata to the one for whom the inner experience is something which uh, is so um, powerful, so present, and so real that that um, that he knows that to be a milta zutrata in the context of all other things which are given their external external structure. That's Moshe Rabbeinu. That's Moshe Rabbeinu, and 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 deeply relates to Moshe Rabbeinu as the Anav. I mean, after all, that was that was the that was the definition, right? That it's something which is small. Atem hameat mikol haamim. You are small in that you are, you know, core at the at the at the at the root of 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 what is. Moshe Rabbeinu touches that, and so is that. And therefore is nameless and and denies the Torah being by him. How could I, how could I be in possession of anything? What what kind of a selfhood do I have that would be in possession of it? As we saw as we saw last week. But that then that then in terms of the um, the, the, the 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 describing of the of the uh, you know of the of the mida right that he lives is, is certainly is certainly a description of the anava the the, the maat aspect. But in terms of the inner reality, we didn't we didn't ever explore what the inner reality would be of that. We only explored the attitude, the consciousness, the stance in relation to, in terms of how we understand ourselves to be embedded in the all of existence. But but the but the but the uh, inner the inner experience of it has has not been explored and is only explored. In um, in in this native, where we talk about Yira, so it in end we see that it shares with Anava this uh, this 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 aspect of being a milta zutrati. And again, just to just to to uh, to, to 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 summarize that, it's a milta zutrati because <laughs> because it's you know you, you can't. He can't measure it on the radar screen. It just does not show up as a blip. Right? The, the, the nature of consciousness and stuff. Now, if I could ask you, Don, to turn it off. Okay, thanks. Yeah. On a, Other comment about that? Yeah. yeah. We're just going back to the, the year off and the idea of consciousness and the, the milk is usually being the smallest thing. In terms of the brain, um, the reason why predictability is actually adds a lot in terms of the variables is because the Yirat Shemayim is that one thing that's not in the hands of heaven, right? Is that what we were talking about at the beginning? Is there that, that everything is in heaven, but Yirat Shemayim? Right. Right, that's that X factor. And predictability, right, is predeterminism. In, in some ways, you can look at the brain and there's all these variables.
variables happening in the physical world, and you can say, well, this will happen, and this will happen, and then this will happen, and you can all see it in your brain. You can tell how you're going to react to all these different stimuli based on looking at the pattern in your head. Right. You know, but your Akshamayan is that one place that it doesn't touch. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's, that's um, okay. Yeah, well, the, 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 the predictability factor is the, is, the one, is the one factor which cannot be applied to this phenomenon of, the, of, of, of my response, my response, of my experience of it, and how it is processed in, processed in my consciousness in a way in which my subjectivity participates in the responsiveness to it. Yeah, <clears throat> so the, there, are no, there are no rules that could be made about that. Yeah, thank God. Thank God that he uh, left that out of his control. <laughs> yeah. I'm going to flesh out the connection uh, with the Anav because the more our consciousness becomes more refined and aware of the subtle, the more it goes through the process of Inuit, of Afshata, of, of kind of polishing and, and removing ever more coarseness, coming to ever more refined. That's the process of becoming a nav, and it's um, perceptive counterpart is the subtle. Right, it's perceptive counterpart is the subtle, beautiful. The, 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 the subtlety of it, in that it is not something which is um, enclosed or, or um, defined by the clothing it's wearing. <laughs> I'm really struck by the role that education and the the uh, continuing liaison with propaganda um, lays in this. Because I mean, you said thank God that you know they got left out of the form. Well, me and yes and no, because you know nature abhors a vacuum, and the the idea that in theory you cannot dictate someone's inner experience sounds nice, but it's not entirely true. I mean, maybe in, on some level there's always a freedom to the inner experience, but that presupposes a, a high degree of consciousness. Of, of it presupposes a what? A high, degree of, a high degree of consciousness that I'm aware of what my inner experience is, whereas you see any number of examples, particularly once, um, say, modern Nazi Germany and forward, where there's been significant success in creating people's inner experience. I mean, I, I remember watching during the heat in Akut, I had a very good friend who was studying industrial psychology, and the, ar the psychological architects of the Hidnakut who were sent in to construct a program to train the army to be able to do something which everybody knew that they didn't want to do, brought forward very efficient tools to be able to... Control the inner experience and response that people would have to the events that exactly. in any other setting they would have been completely anathema to them. Yes, in order to make, and, and, and sadly these are our, our well-developed tools. And so it, it, it strikes me as important. I, I think that's, that's, that's a crucial point you're making, and it's, it's part of what's actually suggested by the Gemara here. In other words, it's, it's ultimately being a Moshe Rabbeinu that empowers you to experience Yira in the full force of a... Uh, of a purely, I mean, ironically, right, about Moshe Rabbeinu, we'll, we'll talk about that in a moment, right, but it's purely inner and subjective and, uh, and personal response. But not, per, not for Moshe Rabbeinu, it's not, it, okay, right, we'll, just, we'll just put it that way just for now. In other words, but, but I'm, I'm, I'm affirming what you're saying. It requires, it requires, a, it requires a capacity to hold this because it's in, if you're in any way, we'll put it like this, if you're in any way beholden to the external as the means by which you uh, confirm the truth of your perception, uh, by, the, by the means of which you affirm the value of your presence in reality, the by the means, exactly, by the means of which you determine the nature of your identity. If you're in any way re reliant on those external factors, then you are, you are uh, absolute uh, prone, uh, you're, 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 you are um, to, you're, you're pro exactly. You're completely prone. Exactly. You're completely prone to to that kind of manipulation of your 
of what you are supposedly experiencing as your inner experience. Right. Because it is not your inner experience. But you experience it as such. You experience as it, your inner experience, yeah. but it is not your inner experience. What it is is something which is really being formed uh, by virtue of the way in which you are needing others to define it for you. And the more you become reliant, and that's, 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 that's the way they do it, right? The more you become, uh, over time, reliant on, uh, little by little, on the feedback mechanisms, which were so highly trained to read, just because of the, the nature of survival on this planet, you were just like highly trained to, to read those feed, you know, and feedback mechanisms. Not even conscious. You're looking, you're looking at me this way, you're looking at me that way, he's like this way, that way, enemy, friends, why, why would matter? Oh, he's with me. Well, why was that so important to you? I've forgotten long ago why that was so important to me, because you've managed to activate my, you know, my rep so to speak, my reptilian aspect or my, my just survivalist aspect, it right? Right. Yeah. Right. But it becomes <laughs> maladaptive and digital. Right. Right. And I become and I become completely uh, in, invested in that. So in becoming invested in that, then I become completely um, you know, malleable to the way which you're going to construct my inner experience as being experienced. Because on a certain profound and and tragic level, I have. I have uh, really abdicated my earlier experience to you. Is, isn't that the 49th level of Puma? I, I don't know if it is or not, but 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 it's certainly it's certainly uh, important what you're pointing towards, and that is that 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 ultimately it's going to take a redeemer who is who is absolutely and completely unattached to that. Um, that function of, uh, of, of survivalist modality to redeem anyone. You can't be really redeemed by a human being who is an unredeemed human being. Because the unredeemed human being and the, unre the, the, the captive can never redeem himself from his own captivity as long as he remains captive. Because the captivity itself becomes the format for his um, for his uh, release, but it's a release simply into another captivity. And so, whether it was being experienced in the in the jail cell, or now it's experienced in the in the uh, in the eyes in the eyes of the jail in the eyes of the jail keeper. What happened? In the eyes of the jail cell. Okay. Anyhow, or in the uh, in the eyes of the jail keeper, right? Uh, that that's which is becomes, and so then then basically, if that's if that's if who's redeeming you, who is needing that, so he will be forming you into one who is, and and we so readily do it, giving your giving your freedom over to him, the freedom being ultimately in its depth and most in most existential sense, you're your inner experience as being that which is your own, right? So you're, you're absolutely right that this is, it's, it, this is uh, maybe a Milta Zutrati for Moshe Rabbeinu, but it is not a Milta Zutrati, that, that, that a purview of, of, the, of the inner experience as being my own reality. I mean, we just so, we're so, uh, on, a, on, on certain real levels, so anxious to give that over. So anxious to give that over. So it's really, be, it's really first of all, it's, 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 it is so small. It's so small, it, it is so subtle. It's, uh, how, how do I know that I'm responding right? I got, I got the smile. I got the wink. I got the nod. I know, now I know. <laughs> now you know, <laughs> because another, <laughs> another, Another person who's going to be eaten by by worms in a couple of years nodded his head at you. I mean, is this not insane? Is this not insane? But that insanity is the is 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 a particular human reality because our inner experience is such a small and subtle thing, such a small subtle voice. It's yeah. So what is the what is the uh... What is what happens to the kid after he says that everybody's not wearing any clothes? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. Do you get what, do you get what I'm saying? Yeah. Um, 
I don't get what you're saying. You're okay. Like, well, uh, what happens to the kind of It's like the alternative to that mode of being is the mode of being of grief. You've spoken of in the past of uh, Mila as being about stepping out of that survivor's modality into relationship with the divine. Just noting it's like a connection <coughs> between greed and Rachamayim and the actual uh, the challenging nature of continually participating in that mode of being. Yeah. That responsive existence, mode of being of accountability to the highest of the highest order versus what happens to be present here or in this plane area. Very much. And um and breath breath is um on many levels that way. Breathe, first of all, on the organ which is responsive hormonally to become responsive uh, consciously. As Chazal say, ultimately, Ein kishu'ela ladat. There is no, there is no unwilling erection, right? There is no unwilling meeting with reality. Now, we all know there is, but we also know that there isn't. In other there's words, potential to make it, then there's not. Exactly. The more, the more freed you are from it being a simple basal hormonal response to being something which is chosen to to make that interaction and contact. So the more pure you are in your responses, being truly inner and ex truly a, a truly inner experience that is an expression of, of selfhood and identity, rather than a rather than a uh, a personal reflex. And I want to distinguish now between being the personal and the identity. Right? There is. The personal is not what we're talking about here when we're talking about experience. Personal is, is um, so to speak, uh, per, you know, uh, in in the sense of it being an inner. It's it's personal that that it's not really about a meeting with what is out there. It's about a um, a um, oh, wow. I don't know what's going on. Did you put a little coffee in this? Yeah. <laughs> I know what's going on because I spent a little too much time in the in in, in the Mayan and but I saw the sun came out. And I've been I've been dunking in a warm mikva, which I don't like. <laughs> and the sun came out. I mean it was it was only five degrees, but there was the sun. <laughs> so I went in and just, my head is still a little bit like fuzzy. But um should I, should I make coffee? Yeah, just a little cup of coffee, yeah. Um, no, no milk, no sugar. Just the raw stuff. So um, this, um, uh, what was I saying? Personal, yeah, personal. yeah. This is very, very important. Very, very important because because the 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 personal response has to do with the acquisitive. It's personal. I'm taking that personally, you know. I took that personally. But, what does that mean? I took it personally. Usually it means um, that really bothered me. <laughs> so I took it personally. Or, or it can be. Survival, small, protect myself. Exactly. It's about, it's about, it's usually spoken that way. And it actually is referring to something which is, which is per, meaning this, per this, per that, per this, per that, the personal, which is the, um, which is the, the aspect of ourselves, which is, in a sense, cut off from our environment, reactive to it, but not really participant participant with it, right? You see how that's different than than a, um, a, a an exploration of identity as being interconnected with that which is out there, in which I'm not re reacting personally. I am participating in an, an expanded identity, which puts me in contact, and and gives my place of choice in response a place in the entirety of what of what of what reality is and what creation is is when i take it personally i cut myself off when i experience it as a response i'm having as part of my identity being intertwined with what is out there you see how that's different do you understand the kind of experience i'm talking about i hope you you appreciate this. 
that that um, that there's what you said to me that I take it personally, right? And then I'll start looking introspectively about what this means for me and what this what, what this does to me. And it may be positive taking it personally. And there's something else which happens when you say something to me and 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 I sense are being joined together. And my response is a response which is a subjective response and an experience of what just happened. It's an inner experience of what just happened. That's my, that's my medium for experiences, the experience of what just happened. But it's not, I'm not taking it personally. It's something which is binding us and, and, and bringing us together. Is that the sense in which you, you bring out, uh, I, I know I got, got long, but, but that's the sense, I believe, in which Breathe here is 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 um, is very much part of this. Yeah, very much part of this. The way you see it with Moshe Rabbeinu, as we brought out in the past, is the way he speaks to Aaron. In in this last week's parsha, it's just such a beautiful thing. Dabru el bnei Yisrael, where where Moshe and Aaron are both given the commandment together, and Moshe says to Aaron, Lamdeni, and Aaron says to Moshe, Lamdeni. And apparently then Moshe says to Aaron, Lamdeni, and Aaron again says to Moshe, Lamdeni. Because the Medrash says, the truth is that neither of them spoke. <laughs> neither of them spoke. Hash, the voice came out from between them. Because each was, was, was seeking to be um, in a relation with the other that would be of learning. That... That from the place of 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 of, of Yira is a place of, of of absolute responsiveness to the other, such that I can hear and you can be my teacher. You can be my teacher. So so this, um, <clears throat> nevertheless, despite its its incredible grandeur in terms of the it, it, what it, what our identity is. It's it's re it really is the small it's the smallest thing in the universe. It's the smallest thing in the universe because it is. It's it's so private. It's so so your own so your own. It's like a cold amadaka. It's, it's it's so it's so your own. So how big are you? Well, what do you mean? How big am I? I mean, how how big is that experience? It's not only immeasurable, but it really is. Small because it is so, so individual, but it will it will be um, destructive if that individual nature of it becomes disconnected and taking it personally, as opposed to yirat shamayim and yirat Hashem, which is a response to the to the all of creation in my own personal experience of it, right? In my own experience of it, so that's. That's something which is not disconnected. That's something which is very specific and individual, but very connective. It's a lot of words, but but the but the but the um, the depiction of it, I think, is just so beautifully given by Chazal, with Moshe Rabbeinu saying to Aaron Lamdeni, "I can respond to you. I I I I can I can hear you. I can learn from you. I ask that of you." Um, okay. Um, so, in, but in terms of the redemptive power of this, it really is the it is the redemptive power that that um, that uh, only when I abdicate it can I be taken control of. You know, we haven't used this language in the film, but um, as far as process and product, you know, if, if it's something that occurs for us to control. Then it has a specific endpoint. It's formed into a specific figure, and then the, and the goal would be to reach it. Right. But if it's something that has no specific form, it's all subjective as to the personal, as to me, how I relate to this thing. It's all about relationship with other. And it sounds like it's a, it's a process that is totally disconnected from, from product. It's something that is, you never ever reach it per se. It's always in that realm. Uh, I hear that. I hear that. It's very much the dynamic. Mm. Yeah, very much the dynamic. Uh, okay. Yeah. 
Um, okay, so so let's go deeper about this. Right? I mean, this is this is, like, this is a very this is a very very important teaching because it's a teaching to us about about that which is the most precious thing in creation to Hakadosh Baruch Hu. Yirat Hashem hi otsaro. I mean, this is this is an astounding thing to say. Ain la Hakadosh Baruch Hu. Ain, ain, ain. There's nothing else. It bebeit knazav. There's nothing else in his treasure house of hidden treasures, and specifically a knazav are the hidden treasures, right? There's nothing else in his hidden treasures. Ela otsar shel yirat shamayim. <laughs> that's like that's an astounding thing. I'm sorry. He otsaro. Unnecessary word. Right. He otsaro. It's a mute. It's a mute. It's exclusive. It's a mute. Right. But listen to this. I mean, there is nothing else that a college pro who has. In but what does that mean? What does that mean? But but in a sense, we know exactly we know exactly what that means because we know it exactly from our own inner appreciation of the experience of experience. But what what else? What else? Really, really? What else is there in the universe? Exactly. C certainly, from our perspective, that's the only chidush. I mean, the God doesn't need us for anything else. No. The only thing that he, so to speak, needs us for is for our experience of everything else. So <laughs> there's, there's nothing, he, there's, right, there's nothing else which is not on some level a clone of himself. You don't keep in your Beit Genazim, you don't keep in your, in, your, in your treasure house what is... Reproducible and 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 absolutely um, generic. The only thing you keep in your Beit Azim are the things which are absolutely unique, irreplaceable, and inimicable. You you can't you can't make another one of this. You must keep it. And and the reason that you can't make another one of this is because it's not your doing. It is purely a a a, a product of the inner experience of the. Of, of he who is, so to speak, outside you, who is experiencing you. This is it's just so. What I mean, but that's but that's exactly what is dear to us. You know, there's a medrash which describes this, right? Um, yeah, go ahead. In a simple way, it's like people say, "Well, what do you give to somebody who has all the things in the world?" <laughs> it's like, well, like a card that says what you you know appreciate them or something that like they you can't buy that. It's like appreciation and connection. It's, Right now, imagine, imagine if you could give them, and what this is—I mean, I guess is what you're you're saying basically in the card. But imagine if you could give them a, a taste of your adoring experience of them. Oh, God, if I could give you, really, David, I mean this, really. It's not easy, right? But if I could give you, if I could give you a, a taste of my adoring appreciation of who you are. Would that not be the most extraordinary gift? I mean, the heck, the heck with, the heck with all the other stuff. You know what I mean? Like the heck with the words. It was like the, 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 the to, to taste, to taste that. I, yeah, to taste, to taste that experience that another has of you. Like that's that's actually that's the one thing that you you can't make of on your own. You can't make that on your own. Now, if I were to give you that as an act of love. As an act of, as, as as a real act of love, that you should add that experience of yourself to the, the experience of yourself from a whole new a whole new appreciation of you from, from a whole new perspective. That would be just so expansive. Now imagine that it wouldn't just be mine, but it would be everyone in the room who was able to gift you with that. Not only everyone in the room, but everyone in in, in the universe, who's ever come in contact with you or hasn't come in contact with you just because they're able to touch the nature of you are. That's how, this is how we become expansive. This is why love is so adored by us, right? so sought by us. And it is also on the sordid side of things why we so much look to see how that other person is um, 
relating to us. Are they, do they like me? Don't they like me? That's the, that's the sad side of that same equation. And for HaKadosh Baruch Hu to experience the experience of him from he who, so to speak, stands outside of him. What could be more expansive to HaKadosh Baruch Hu than that? I mean, there is nothing else. It's just, it's just a manifestation. It's him. just him. It's just him. I really, I really do wish I was really like in that. I really, I don't know how to do that. You know, it's the, only, the only way to do that is, is in some kind of a stance of love, a chabura that, that shares consciousness together. Just on a, on a very simple level, one of the things that Marshall Rosenberg teaches is um, instead of giving compliments to express appreciation in terms of how something, like instead of, oh, you're so great or you're so charismatic, I was really touched by what you said about Europe. Well, that's what, you know, that's what happens. That's what happens when that, when that, when that is spoken. So you're, that's our attempt to share, yeah. right, by sh- a sharing, right, right. There's another element that we are really speaking, which is that I think, a necessary step is I actually have to be conscious of my experience of you. I think that's where a lot of the breakdown is, is that, is that so so few of us are actually aware and conscious of our own experience. Yeah. So how can I share my experience of, of you with you if I'm like all muddled in that? And that's what I'm I hear. I'm not my, having my experience. Right. So that's what I hear in <laughs> what you said is if, it, if I'm able to genuinely say to you, oh, you said touch me or move me, that is the premise to that is that I'm actually being touched and moved, and yeah, I'm aware right. that I'm being right. touched and moved by what you're, you're That's doing. Right. Yeah. So yeah. like the, the 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 real gift then becomes the the training of consciousness of self, so that I can really become sort of like a um, a responsive palette in yes. that moment. That's right. Yeah, very much. And and on a certain level, and this is this this subtle distinction, not not take it personally, but take it consciously. Not impersonally. Take it consciously. Take it. Uh, you know, yeah. it's and, we, and, and as we grow in our consciousness and ability to inhabit different perspectives and different perspectives of others, so even things which we which might sound personal, we can come to inhabit the person's perspective and and have some compassion and. Okay, that would be right. <laughs> as opposed to okay, that's yeah, that's already a tikkun for for the problematic, right? But but in a training for, for for what it would be to to share to share consciousness that way, that so so there's nothing more dear to a Kaddish Baruch Hu. That, that the stance of Kira? On a certain level, there's there's definitely that. <laughs> I'm not so sure that it's in the Shvachim as much as it is in the Bakashot, because when we share our our our, our desire. With Hakadosh Baruch Hu, on a certain you know, in, in, on a certain level, that's where we really share our perspective, the way we see Him and what He can give us, and what we know He Himself wants, as we've explained it. I mean, that's a prayer like that is really sharing consciousness with Him. It's really sharing consciousness with Him. The the Medrash actually describes this right with um, with a beautiful Medrash in Baha'u'llah, which we have brought in the past with Hakadosh Baruch Hu. Uh, being described like in a story, you know, like a king who had someone who he loved so dearly. It was a simple man, and he told him, "I'm, I'm coming to, I'm coming to eat by you tonight." So the guy ran home, like, you know, okay, you know, let's get this together. <laughs> but he didn't have very much. So he, no, he didn't borrow anything. He didn't have. He used what he had, and he set it out. And, but and, you know, for the king to come, and then the king's, the king's entourage, you know. Is outside. He looks out the window. He sees the candelabra. He sees the, the incredible chariot. He sees all the all the all the gold and all the silver. And he looks inside. It's just like this simple clay, simple clay and wood, you know, utensils and and, and, and wooden table. And so he's just like he just out of shame. He just puts it all in the closet, you know. So the king comes to the door and he opens the door and he says, looks inside. It's like it's empty. I, I, didn't I tell you I was coming? Didn't I tell you I was coming? So, so the man says, "Yes, but I was, I was so ashamed for, for what I have in the presence of all that's yours." So the king said, but, "But it's yours that I love." So 
So the Gemara, the, the Medrash, the Medrash goes on and says, this is, this is what it means, Nehore Yishrei Lei. There's plenty of light where God is. He's got galaxies. He's got galaxies. Nova star bursting with incredible light. It was unbelievable. The, the, uh, uh, you know, the, the, the amount of material and the force, force of it you know, and the energy of the, of the universe is unbelievable. I mean, what have you got? And yet, a Kodesh Baruch Hu says, you light me the menorah. That's where, that's where this, this medrash is brought. You light me the menorah. It's your, it's your light. But the depth of that is, it's your, it's your, and the way the medrash is describing it here, right, the Gemara, it's your inner experience which I, which I seek. It's your inner experience which I seek. I mean, all of that is just, Raw material. That's, what is that? It's it's nothing. There's nothing. Not only is there nothing individual about it. It's all me. There can't be an experience of love there and of sharing, of breed there. So so that's 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 really his otsar. That's really his otsar. Uh, that's that's the Beit Kinazah. That's the inner the inner reality. That um, that is so 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 precious to him. It's so beautiful that it's uh, in the zap. Zap is the hidden part. That's our inner experience. That's, that's right. Exactly. Exactly. It's the it's the it's his idea of a, of something which is um, which is <laughs> hidden away in the treasure. In the way in the treasure. I'm sorry. The one says yes, you might not talk about the the kings and shabbos. You're asking, that's kind of a kasha you're asking. Uh, right. Could we understand how, how Shabbat is that? Yeah. Beautiful. Yeah. I what think we should. What does the Gemara say? The Gemara says that, that Moshe, Moshe Rabbeinu heard from HaKadosh Baruch Hu before he was given Shabbat that I have one very dear gift in my Bebek and Azai, the Shabbat Shema. There's a lot to do with that. It's a beautiful, it's a beautiful thing. It's a lot. To, there's a lot to do with that, and we could spell a little bit of it out. Just hang on there. Or you want to, you want to punch in now? I mean, we're just in a conversation. But is that related to what he just said? No, but I, it's okay. I, I mean, so why don't you just say it? Just get it, get it out. No, so, so the, the, yeah, because I, I, I thought it would be relevant. Anyway, um, so the, the Beit Hamikdash is teaching everyone knows the Torah. Right? The Mashiach, right? Um, um, like, kind of flips this whole thing. Right? Right, so I don't want to deal with the Meshach right now because I just want to work with Chazal. And we'll come to that. Well, it is related, but it's just uh, it's a whole different track. Okay. So in terms of in terms of Shabbat, so um, so the uh, yeah, I mean, one of the beautiful things about Shabbat, right, is the is the mitzvah ase of Shabbat, his own egg. And Oneg is really our inner response in the most heightened and um, inner sense is Oneg. And it comes when all of the externals are quieted down. And these are the things in my treasure houses, the things that I take to me to keep for myself. When it says Shabbos, it's in my treasure house. It means your heart. Oh, beautiful, great. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Okay, there's, there's, there's definitely what to work with there, right? Yeah. You say Shabbat is, it creates the space which allows for the emergence of the freedom from the, um, from the external, from the slavery to the... Not, not that the external is an illusion, but the illusion of its, I guess, the, what do you want to say? Okay, this is, this is, this is all taking us in a, in a different direction. It's a beautiful point to, to work with, yeah. Okay, so, so, um, so let's take a look a little bit at how, how the, how the Maharal opens this up. And, but this is, but before, before we do, I just want to make like, I want to comment, right? And this is, um, I mean, this is just, just for us to, to, to place ourselves contextually in terms of, in terms of human issues, uh, human existential issues. This is, I mean, this is what, what we can talk of 
when we want to speak of the existential nature of of, uh, of, of humanity, the, the 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 meaning of being a human being as opposed to being any other structure in the universe, is is entirely around this, and it's why it's it's why it's such a mystery, and, and why really only of late it's become a, a subject for science to explore. It's in a sense only as we've broken down the barrier between consciousness and the material that we're willing to look at this as a phenomenon and and still hold up our hands and wonder at it. Well, it was the realm of religion before that. It was the realm of religion. It was the guarded realm of religion before that. It was, it was a good deal for science because the church didn't murder all the scientists because they made a cl the statement that there's the realm of spirit and there's the realm of matter. We're only studying the realm of matter. You people deal with the realm of spirit. There's no mind, only brain. There's only, exactly, there's only brain. But as, as, as the, the grip hold on that has been loosened, so then, 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 then this whole reality of inner experience has, has, has uh, become a subject of study. Whatever that means, right? But but the point is, in terms of in terms of us, so that's 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 really a description of of the prime feature, not only of ourselves, but of, of the creation itself, the creation itself. That there should be such a thing, there should be such a thing. And in terms of uh, freedom, it's it's Moshe Rabbeinu's gift. You see how, for him to be the teacher of Torah, and for him to have Yirat Shamayim. And for him to be the redeemer, all, all really meet together. All really meet together. If he would have any inkling of of his yira not being yira chamay, if he would have any um, attachments to a fear of the lower sort, which is what breeds the kind of dependencies which uh, pollute your inner experience, with the definitions of others, then he would not be able to be redeemer. And this is, or a giver of Torah, or the giver of Torah. This is just like such a deep thing because you, you just, you see how this is, it, it's on, it's, it, it seems like it's on the same scale, my fear of you and therefore my abdication of my inner experience that you should approve of me and hold me and my fear of HaKadosh Baruch which is it's really of an entirely different nature of being being in the presence and in response to him and standing in awe of that. So what you're saying is essentially it's only Yerash Mayim or being camp. There's no Shituf in real era. That's why I just heard this. That Yerash Mayim is it's, it's also a Miltazut in that sense in its singularity. Like I'm not a little bit in awe mm. of God and I'm also in all of these other things. Right. It's about the Zen, right? Either there's Yerat Shemayim, right. or there's Yerat, and there's really, you could break it down into subcategories, but there's Yerat Other. Right, right. There's, there's, got no, there's, no, there's no in between. Right. So you're, 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 you're making a, 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 an additional point in the nature of it being a Milta Zutrati, that it is a very singular, singular point. Hain Yerat Hashem, right? Hain, like the Chazal say, we'll see this later, right? That there's only one thing. Right? Hain. In Greek, Hain is one. <laughs> it's like a weird thing. Well, it's important that it's Greek. Because the <coughs> encounter of Greece was the first encounter of the Dach Sony. I was like, oh, I understand that you look at the world that way, but real wisdom involves <laughs> okay. being able to get outside of that and look at it. Okay, way. okay. But I just want to get back to, back to your point, which is a very dear point, and that is that it's a point. You know, in the sense that, in the sense that there is no room for other fears for a person who's really in Yirat Hashem. There is no room for other fears because as soon as there are other fears, so it lacks the, it lacks the purity, which is necessary for it to be just no my own, my own experience, my own experience. It's, it's become soiled by the question of whether that ex, that inner experience is being appreciated, approved of. Defined by, held by, um, or objected to by the other. As soon as that is the focus, then it's all personal. But when the focus is uh, existence and its and its vastness, 
of which I am a part and yet able to respond to. I mean, what a miracle. What a miracle. It's a total pele. That I can be a part of that and be res- and responsive. It's, total, it's a total pele. That you can have both of those at once. That, um, that's not a matter of, you know, whether you hold me and approve of me and that. That's, that's, that's something we're so prof- profoundly in, in sharing of. In a sharing. But as soon as there's any shemitz of, you know, what are you thinking about me now? It's, it's not your Hashem anymore. Because it's not small anymore, the way you're putting it in terms of the images. It just got big. Big enough to include my responses and reactions to you. There's sort of my constructs about what I should be in today. Right, right. And it's no longer my experience. It's no longer my experience. This is tough. This is tough. This is really, this is tough. This is like, uh, you can see how, how, you know, like there's not going to be any wisdom unless you, on some level, are able to achieve this in your midot. Because how are you going to see what is, which is what wisdom is, if uh, if you're entangled with um, with the perspectives of others about about you and and, and 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 what you think of things and how you experience them? So you see how tchilat chokma yirat Hashem. This is tough, this is like the high, high demands, high demands. So it's just so beautiful, you know, that Moshe Rabbeinu has to say it, though, as something which reflects his own experience of it. Otherwise, otherwise it would be totally miss the point. <laughs> it totally miss the point if he wouldn't say it. As a, it's just, it would totally miss the point. We have this, you know, this... I mean, for him, like, he's there, so is that what you're saying? No, more than that, I'm saying. To, it can only be expressed in, in, as a function of one's own personal. He can't tell oh, them what it is for them. Right. He can't. He for, for, him, for him to define Yirat Hashem is what, uh, is what God is asking for. For him to say that would be to, to, to uh, describe it as if it's some objectively existing entity that is, that is just another one of those measurable phenomena of creation. <laughs> You know, it's like there's such a thing as Yirat Shamayim, and and this is what God's asking for. But as soon as he says, "What's God asking for?" He's speaking from his inner experience of it. Wait, wait, just one second. We'll get to that in a second, exactly. But before we get to that, he's he's the in other words the medium of the delivery of the message of Yirat Shamayim must fit the nature of what Yirat Shamayim is which is purely an inner experience. The medium must reflect that, and that medium, therefore, must be this personal statement of Moshe Rabbeinu about how his experience of Yerat Shamayim is. And the word that he uses, as David is pointing out so beautifully and so correctly, is ma. That's the nachnu ma of anava. That is Moshe Rabbeinu's, which is the koach ma, the power of what? The ability to, to truly witness something simply in what it is. But that relies on Trilat Chochma, Yirat Hashem. Yirat Hashem. If you don't have that, then everything else is going to be skewed. So, so I think that's a doctrine again. Not just as you said, is what it is. And I'll do that. The form is evocative of the taste of the of his experience. The the, the form by his of by the, awesome sort of right right the, the the form of the communication right. is an evocative communication. Meaning, I, I from what I understand, you're saying meaning is that is it, it it draws out of the listener the very point 
that the, the message contains mm -hmm. by the modality in which, with, with, which he, in which he makes the statement. You can't convey the experience. You're trying to evoke it in the other. Right, yeah. right, yeah. right. You can't convey it in the word. Right. You can communicate it. As you said before, the reason that poetry is the preferred yeah. and gets to what we've spoken about is so so it is being evoking that experience. Right. What can be communicated as right. message. Right. It's it's the in a sense the problematic of 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 speaking what is in your Beit Genazim, what's in your hidden Treasure. It's so, so hidden. It's so hidden. It's so hidden because it is so that's what, uh, intimate. That's what it's so that's intimate. Uh, esoteric is. Not something that, like, well, they, they know it's a secret, then they didn't tell us. It's, uh, right. right. Beautiful. That's that's the real right. meaning of so. That's the real meaning of so. That really is the meaning of so. Hmm. <sighs> wow, this just makes it ever more dear how um, how Yirat Shamayim first first happened with Abraham and his uh, son Bin Chayechid Chasher Ahavta. There's something there's something in there, you know, only. It's 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 very subtle and tricky, you know, his his own special relation with his son. That is crucial that you that you touch that place in you so that when the Yurachamayim happens at the Akeda, it's not just obedience. It's not just obedience. It's it's in a sense the opposite of obedience. It's the it's the free response to what is, to the nature of what is. But I don't I don't want that from you unless you have first become individuated enough and and personalized enough that you experience your son. Do you see him? Do you see him? It's not until you see him that I'm really interested in you seeing me. I'm not. It's the, it's the, it's the accomplishment of Parshat Vayera. You know, I'm not, I don't want you to see me because for you to see me without your having seen him and experienced him in his dearness to you, and open that place in you of something that is dear to you. It's not until that has happened that your experience of me will have any meaning to me. I'm not looking for you to be obedient to me in. In, in taking your son, I'm looking for you to open up this this um, this uh, treasure house within you of an inner experience, which can only be opened by your meeting the unique relationship that you have with your son. Learn what a point of contact is. Exactly. Unless unless that point in you has been opened and touched, so then then your year of me will be nothing more than just some kind of a generic and really facile uh, construct of your fears, that's all, it's like of, of your need to protect yourself and, and um, oh, I better do what he says. No. Oh, I don't want that. I don't want that. It's got to come on the heels, so to speak, of his own inner experience of his son as bin Chayichitcha. And then the first time, the first time in the universe, you know, really the first time in the Torah, that there's someone about whom it says, he's a Yerei Hashem, emerges from that as an, a, 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 rea a reality that emerges from his, from, from, from his love, from his love of his own very, very special son. <laughs> very, you don't have that place in you, then your Yerei Hashem will will never be a Milta Zutrata. It will never be a small, intimate, and personal one, individual. 
root to response because you've never experienced what it means really to respond. This is why, and I'll finish. This is why. This is why, as I'll say, you know, lech lecha rishon, lech lecha acharon. You know, it's ten nisyonos of Abraham. The first one is with lech lecha, and the last one's with lech lecha. The first one, lech lecha me artsecha. You've got to go out from the incestuous nest of the comfort of being held by all the people who coddled you and cared for you and taught you, etc., etc. Okay, and where are you going? Where are you going? <laughs> oh no. But I can tell you that the final Nisayun for Avram is again a return to Lech Lecha, El Eretz Hamoria, right? It becomes a place that is seen. So at the beginning, I can just send you on the journey. But in the end, I can, I can, I can hope for and get from Abraham response, but real response. It's worth the whole travels of the wait for that child, that there should be bincha yechidcha, that Abraham would relate to that way in order for him to discover within himself what it means to relate to his own inner experience, of his own inner experience as a value. Also, you, you do care about him. Wonderful. Wonderful. Now, now we can open up your responding to me from an entirely different place of, 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 of selfhood that responds. The lech lecha that responds. Okay. Thank you. <coughs> yeah. I'm wondering about the structure of the Nisayonot and Abraham, whether there's not a teaching there. I'm wondering, I'm wondering, I'm wondering, like, I'm wondering, I'm wondering, like, I'm wondering about the structure of the Nisayonot. There's not a teaching there. Meaning yeah. the, the first step of, of leaving former context <laughs> and that last step of finding that genuine point of contact. Yeah. What, what, like why pen and what are the stages right. that can take you from the courage to say, okay, look, okay I'm going to step out. Step know, in. I'm right. I don't know where I'm going. <laughs> and I, if, I, if, if, if I were to know where I'm going, it wouldn't be a going. Right. But we all know that there's more often than not, when people get that courage, it ends up in a seeking, a, a, a hiding somewhere else. That like we all seek a certain common someplace place. else to embed ourselves right. in. Right. And right. so I'm wondering what what are the stages? I wonder. Yeah. Are, are yeah. Yeah. Sort of reflective of stages that can prepare you. One honoring that genuine fear and difficulty of just naked contact. Right. But gradually preparing you for the for the for the real embedding in in your shemayim, which is that. Right. I'm curious. Yeah, no, that's 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 a beautiful, a beautiful uh, investigation to make. So what, what were this, it turns it turns an entirely new light onto the ten misionot. Right, makes him not sort of like God saying, hey, "Watch what I'll do in this time." Don't worry. He's this one, that one. No, no, no. There's a process here that he's taking him from the lech lecha me artzicha to the lech lecha el eretz hamoriah. Like, where has he been going to? He's been going to the, and it's so amazing, right? He's been going to the mountain, which will be declared, Bahar Hashem Yira'e, the place where God is perceived. So that's the key, because that's where he's trying to take us. I mean, that, that's of course. so much of that, that phrase in there, the Yira'e. Right. right like, whoa, that's where I'm headed. Right. That's the sign that, right. that maybe the whole way that he got here is also right. a guy. Right. But, but the, the, the Har Hashem Yira'e, is the place where Abraham achieves for humanity Yir At Hashem means that the Yir At Hashem has to do with the ability to perceive 
Hashem Yitbarach. But, the, but the, the crucial transition has to do with the awakening in him of his love for his singular son. As it's like... Abraham is able to identify at least the lack of the That's right. Ain Yirat Elokim. Ain Yirat Elokim. Okay, no, but that's a critical transition that happens in the Akedah. Also, right, of Hirat Hashem, that's the Avaya, but yeah, but great, exactly. He's able to identify, this hasn't, it hasn't happened yet. Right. 